Besides classes like fighters, mages, tanks, and whatnot, there are groups of champions in League with a small or big gimmick shared among them. I know in recent years every champion is known for their own party trick, but what I'm referring to more specifically is a game mechanic that happens to be part of a lot of characters. Over the past few months, I made one touching on infinite scaling, that's a shared gimmick, and also shapeshifters, which came out not too long ago too. And when I posted the community tab asking what groups you guys thought would be worth covering, there were a number of comments asking for a video on summoners. To clarify, pet summoners, not summoner spells or summoners being us, the players. So let's get to it. For today's video, we're going to be talking about summoners in League of Legends, and why they will never be allowed to be good, not necessarily because they're bad per se, but more that they will never be able to be more than just a bee stick. Really quickly though, I just want to thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring the video. Surfshark is a virtual private network that allows you to surf the web completely anonymously by stopping websites from tracking you, masking your IP address to keep your location and identity hidden so you don't get hit by targeted ads and the like. VPNs also help you bypass location restrictions. If let's say you're trying to watch a video or download something that's not available in your home country, you can set your proxy location to somewhere else where that is possible. For all intents and purposes, they protect you while you're browsing the internet, and given how almost every electronic device interfaces with the web these days, Surfshark has an app for all platforms, PC, Mac, Linux, smartphones, smart TVs, game consoles, what have you. They also have a strict no-logs legal policy, which means Surfshark themselves will not save any of your data so you can use the app without worrying that the app itself is tracking you. If you still aren't using a VPN and would like to get one, head on over to Surfshark.com and use the code VARS to get an 83% discount plus 3 extra months for free. Alternatively, you can click the link in the video description down below and it will send you there right away. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring the video. Just like all gimmicks or mechanics, I want to first explain what summons are in this game, a champion summoned unit, often referred to as a pet, is a game character similar to a minion or monster that's spawned into the game by a champion. These units can be interacted with in the same way as any other entity, some of which are stationary, some of which move, some of them do stuff, some of them don't. Even though I'll mostly be covering the ultimate summons, I still think it's worth going through all the various types, starting with decoys. Decoys are copies of champions, most of them last a very short amount of time and are only really there for the purpose of deceiving the enemy team into going for the wrong target. LeBlanc's Mirror Image Passive, Nico Shapeshifter, or Wukong's Warrior Trickster are examples of decoys. They don't last very long, but they do have active hitboxes, meaning they could be the target of any champion-based attacks. For example, if Caitlyn locks onto you with Ace in the Hole and you're playing Wukong, you can press W and have it sit between you and her for the clone to take the shot. Same goes for any attack that can strike only one champion, such as Alawi's Test of Spirit. The only long-lasting decoy in the game is Shaco's Hallucinate, which is technically a decoy because it's a copy of him, but functionally speaking, I consider it a pet summon, so we'll talk about him later. The second group of summons would be minions, instantiable entities that are under the ownership and or control of the champion in question. They behave autonomously, but can be manipulated in certain ways. The most noteworthy cases are Heimerdinger's turrets, Alawi's tentacles, or Zyra's plants. While they're not champions, they play a major role in their respective owner's playstyles. Some minions even move around, like Yorick Schools or Malzahar's Voidlings. Usually minions attack whatever is in sight, but each summoner champ has at least one way to forcibly switch their targeting to something else. Yorick's Morning Mist locks his ghouls onto any target struck by them. Same with Malzahar's Malefic Visions. Heimerdinger's Stun Grenade fully charges up his turret's laser attack to lock onto whoever got hit by it, and Olawi's Harsh Lesson commands her tentacles to attack the target she just struck. It's not always perfect, and sometimes the targeting can be rather fickle, but summoners do have a way to control their minions, albeit indirectly. Now the summons that will be the focal point of this video are the big ones, literally. There are four champions in League of Legends whose strongest ability, their ultimate, summons a pet that potentially contributes a lot of pressure if used correctly, each with their own interactions and attributes. Annie, Ivern, Shaco, and Yorick. What's different about these summons from the ones I talked about earlier is that they last a very long time, can be operated much more liberally, and have additional effects attached to them to make them more of a threat than regular pets. So I'll go through each one at a time. Annie's ultimate summon Tibbers brings her teddy bear to life, causing a huge burst of magic damage as he appears to enemies around him, and then afterwards he remains on the field for up to 45 seconds or until he dies. Tibbers has four passive abilities, the first of which is Flame Aura, which makes him deal damage over time to enemies around him as if he had a bomby cinder. Second is Recovery, regenerating 6% of his max health and giving him bonus movement speed when walking towards Annie if he's out of combat. So you can look at it almost like a Garen passive plus Moby Boots. The third and fourth ones go hand in hand and are the most noteworthy for him. Enrage gives him a boost of movement speed and attack speed for 3 seconds on summon and whenever Annie stuns a champion, which is a big deal because he does a lot of magic damage per hit. 
He also gets enraged for 10 seconds after Annie dies. Basically, if you kill his best friend, he turns into zombie scion for a little bit. It's actually very frequent for him to deal enough damage to kill a squishy target on his own thanks to this, so even if you take down Annie, you have to make sure you put the bear down too. On to Ivern. His ultimate sum is Daisy, a golem that remains on the field for 60 seconds as a controllable pet just like Tibbers, though there's no burst damage accompanying her entry. She also has a couple abilities to talk about. The first one is that she benefits from Ivern's root collar just like if she were a champion, dashing within range of anyone caught by it. Her biggest one is Daisy Smash. Attacking an enemy champion twice causes her third attack on that same target to send out a shockwave that deals damage to anyone in the line and knocks them up for one second. It's a pretty long range too, 800 units, and considering how fast she is, especially during the first 5 seconds of respawning, she can get this attack off more easily than you'd think. Out of the 4 ultimate summons, she's also the most durable too. On screen is a comparison between her and Tibbers. Daisy has way more health, damage, and defense, not to mention she takes 25% reduced damage from AoE attacks, and can be shielded by Ivern's trigger seat so that makes her tankiness even better. I'd still say Tibbers does more damage, but Daisy has enough tank stats to match full-on champions. Shaco's Hallucinate creates a second version of himself with the exact same current health, stats, items, and whatnot. The only difference between the clone and the real one is that the clone takes 50% more damage from all sources and double damage from turrets, meaning it's squishier, and it also only does 60% of the damage compared to real Shaco, and it obviously can't activate abilities either. Additionally, when the clone expires or it dies, it explodes into three boxes and inflicts fear on any enemies nearby for one second. Needless to say, Shaco wants you to kill the clone because it's a walking time bomb, and out of the four summons, it lasts the shortest too, only a maximum of 18 seconds. I mean, it's long enough to last the entire duration of any team fight, but it's noticeably shorter than the others. For the last one, Yorick's ultimate is a bit different from the rest. Eulogy of the Isles calls upon the Maiden of the Mist along with the number of ghouls. Unlike the first three, Yorick's maiden can last indefinitely, so it will not go away until she or Yorick dies. However, it can't be controlled and instead acts like a normal minion that follows him around. That said though, Yorick can recast his ultimate after 10 seconds to set her free, allowing her to push the nearest lane until she dies. And trust me when I say she pushes lanes really well even without the help of Yorick. For her passive components, she really has only two. If Yorick attacks the same target she's attacking, he deals bonus max health magic damage to them which happens every two seconds. The other one is that while she's alive, any enemy that dies around her spawns a ghoul even if it wasn't killed by Yorick's Q. So as long as he keeps her safe, she's effectively an endless battery of ghouls that he can summon. But that's naturally harder to do considering he can't manipulate her movements with mouse clicks like other summons. Now before we continue, I just want to give an honorable mention to arguably the most memorable summoner champion in the game. Mordekaiser. Granted, I love the current Mordekaiser a lot, but as one of the very few people who played the old Mord, I really miss Children of the Grave. Nothing was more entertaining than being able to turn the freaking dragon into a pet. And I hope one day there will come a time where we can do that again. Rest in peace, old Mord. That aside though, did you notice anything in particular as I went through each summon? Any similarities or did you see anything that recurred in all four of them? In case you didn't notice, all of them do the exact same thing. Summons are in a really weird spot in League of Legends for being a very difficult mechanic to make interesting. Not too long ago, you guys saw my video on caster marksmen and how the prevailing issue blocking Riot from making true AD casters is because Ezreal is pretty much the only way they can do it, and any subsequent release will just look like an Ezreal clone. Ivern was the last champion to have an ultimate summon in the game, and he came out back in Season 6, over 5 years ago. And before we even talk about the gameplay elements, we have to touch on the technical problems that happen with these things. They're more or less stabilized now, but summons were broken for years and had to be reworked several times. If you go through the patch notes of Annie, Ivern, and York, bugs galore with their summons. As I was doing research for the video, I found how funny it was that almost every bug fix was their pet, not the actual champion themselves. And of course, all of Mordekaiser's hundreds if not thousands of bugs prior to his rework were due to the ability to turn any enemy champion or the dragon into a ghost. That leads to a lot of interaction janks. From a technical standpoint, it's really hard to design summons in League because of two things, their artificial intelligence and their champion interactions. For one, even though Daisy, Tippers, and Shaco's clone can be manually controlled by the player, they still have their own independent functions, such as when Tippers gets angry if Annie dies. A large issue with Yorick's Maiden was her AI because she didn't behave the way players wanted her to. Moreover, even though these pets are not champions, they have to be programmed and designed as if they were because any contributions they make are on behalf of their summoner. As an example, in patch 9.19, Annie's Tibbers got a bug fix to where his aura now properly drew turret aggro onto Annie if it damaged an enemy champion under tower. 
Things like that. Too many potential bugs that can come from summons, too many if-then statements they have to make, and all that just for a big walking beat stick. Ultimate summons have enough diversity between them to stand out. Shaco's clone is a walking fear bomb, Ivern's Daisy has that knockup attack, Annie's Timbers does a lot of damage, and Yorick's Maiden can summon ghouls and push waves. But in the grand scheme of things, they all have one function, to walk around and attack anything that moves. None of them have active effects, nor do they have any element of mechanical execution. They don't have any combos or offensive or defensive elements. Sure, you can theoretically position Tibbers or Daisy to block a skill shot for you, but that only further proves the point that summons are nothing but meat shields, that's all they can be. Just about every game has a summoner type class, or summoner character that fights using a pet. So this is an archetype as old as the gaming industry itself. Sometimes they're well designed, sometimes they're not. Whatever the case may be, they're more pronounced in gameplay, compared to this game where pets are usually just a mild hindrance to the enemy team. People are scared of Annie's Tibbers, like the actual bear. They're scared of her burst damage that comes from the initial summon. Why it's hard to design good summons in League is because they're extremely limited in what they can do besides walking up to things and attacking them. This game is too complex to design a fully comprehensive AI. How can it know who to attack? How can it know when to do this or when to do that? Where should it position? When should it fall back? It would be way too inconsistent to be effective, therefore it has to be an insignificant portion of the champion's power budget. For the sake of comparison, Super Smash Bros has an item called the Assist Trophy, which summons a random character that has their own effects. Sometimes the character is an offensive one that targets the nearest opponent and attacks them, others might have special properties such as creating a cloud where any healing effect instead damages them. Other assist trophies can black out the entire screen, so on and so forth. Then there's Pokeballs, which summon Pokemon that do random things, in pretty much the same way as assist trophies. The reason those items work just fine is because they're separate from the fighters. None of Smash Ultimate's 75 characters have the ability to summon their own self-functioning entities, because it just wouldn't work. Try to take that over to League, which is 10 times more complex than Smash Bros when it comes to game elements, and you can imagine the insurmountable difficulty in designing something just like that. The possibility of giving summons their own active abilities is a hard case too, because that would entail a champion with more than 3 basic abilities and an ultimate. We did already explore the contingencies surrounding more than 4 activatable abilities in my shapeshifter video, but hypothetically if we were to give one to Tibbers, let's call it Fire Breath which causes him to go on all fours and breathe fire in a cone in front of him for 1 second and do magic damage. Sounds pretty tame, right? To do this, you would have to bind a completely new hotkey just for Annie, and that of course also means she has 5 active abilities now. To balance that out, they would have to reduce the upfront burst damage on her Q, W, and Ultimate. In turn, that would adversely affect her status as a burst mage, since by design, Annie is meant to do a lot of front-loaded damage. What about Ivern then, if we gave Daisy an active that lets her grab an enemy champion and throw them a short distance away? In order to balance that, they would have to shorten Ivern's root duration or something because giving an entire new instance of hard crowd control is a lot of power. It's not just ultimate summons, Malzahar mains have been complaining for years about their voidlings being very hard to consistently use. Heimerdinger, Ilawi, and Zyra all have very low play rates on account of their summons having all of their damage but being clunky and hard to use sometimes. I'm not saying it's impossible to design a good summon in League, it's just there's a lot of hoops you have to go through and you have to be careful about how it influences the distribution of power across a champion's kit. Because with a summon of that nature, you effectively have control over two champions. Now in the case of Aphelios, the reason he's able to get away with having more than three total abilities is because he can only ever activate two of them at a time. He has five Qs due to five weapons, but in any point in the game he can only use two because he's only carrying two weapons. There is a ray of hope though, it may not be the most efficient or feasible idea to make a standalone summon like Daisy or Tibbers, but there is an alternative, we could go with the Puppet Master approach, case in point Azir. Azir is probably Riot's best bet for making a summon champion. Rather than create turrets or minions, untargetable entities that can be manipulated, positioned and such. That would require the champion in question to place their entire power budget in the hands of their summons, but in return it means the player has complete control over that summon. Oriana and Azir are proofs of concept in this regard. We know that control and agency is the biggest determining factor in a player's enjoyment of a champion, but that inherently conflicts with autonomous summons. That's why Shaco's clone Annie's Tibbers, Ivern's Daisy, and Yorick's Maiden can only serve as beat sticks in order to maintain the relevance of their respective owners. So the best course of action would be to go down the marionette puppet master method, which isn't quite the same but not too bad either. But if you think I missed a potential way for Riot to design summons in a better way, then please let me know. I know I kinda make it sound like there's no way for it to be done, but I'm just one man's opinion, so if you can prove me wrong, I actually welcome it. Maybe you guys see something that I can't. 
For now though, if you enjoyed the video, a rating would be much appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to watch more content like this. Consider following me on Twitter and joining my Discord server if you haven't yet. And lastly, check out my other discussion videos after this one. But until then, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for the next episode. Take care.